Fraser Leary won't thank me for this, but I actually own um, this Phantom Engineer album that he uh, played golf clubs on. And I bought it in Tower Records in Piccadilly Circus, which was an absolutely fantastic record shop, and it had a big um, independent section full of kind of uh, sort of uh, American hardcore bands that came out of small labels. I mean, on the same day, I remember I bought this, which is um, I've, I hardly ever listened to actually, a record by Three Mile Pilot. But anyway, um, Tower Records had these had this kind of big independent record section, and they would have um, staff recommendations. And I remember this being one of the staff recommendations. There was a little kind of handwritten card, and it was it was it wasn't in the racks. It was kind of in a, on a little shelf above them, so I, I, I bought it not not because I'm I, I was another one of those record collectors that bought things because they were um, you know no one else had heard them. I just used to buy things that I thought looked good, and I I, I looked at this and you know I, I thought it looked good, and this is the back cover. That the first clue you get that it's an avant-garde album is that it only has seven tracks. You you can't really be an avant-garde band and have a, you know, a 10 or 12 track album that's just uh, fucking ridiculous so I mean this is either jazz, prog rock or avant-garde and then hold on <laughs> this record here Hi um, Snakes for the Divine by High on Fire it's only got 8 tracks plus a bonus track but you can see that's more um, proggy I mean there's a song called Holy Flames of the Fire Spitter on it um, but this this um, this Phantom Engineer album, if you look at the tracks, Morton Bartlett's Children, Sweetheart Come, The Western Snowfall, BC Fifty Two. You you always need a a, a a track with numbers in it. I think if you're going to release a an avant garde album, um, the implication being there's other BCs, maybe a sort of BC Forty Nine or something, and then we've got Ark of a Jet Plane. Uh, End of a holiday and and welcome home, David. Uh, opening it up, here we have the um, cre credits and um, you see um, Phantom Engineer, the core, uh, the key personnel of David Keenan, who I assume is um, the journalist um, David Keenan, who was also in a band called Telstar Ponies, who were quite derivative. They were sounded like the Swans and Nick Cave and My Bloody Valentine, but they were very good. And then there's John Hogarty and Bill Wells. And then there's a kind of, um, there's there's these sort of uh, supplementary musicians, um, someone called Cotton Casino, who, who provides vocals, um, Keith Cameron, um, trumpet, Claire Sturgis, trumpet and hand percussion. I, I assume mean, that's a fancy... Uh, uh, name for clapping and then you you have these these two um I assume they're Japanese people um Hiroshi Higashi who provides monk mumble and Makoto Kawabata who um also provides monk mumble and something called a sarufi box and then and then finally right at the bottom we have Fraser Luri on tea off and clubs and um, the record's produced by Toby Robertson and the Phantom, um, mysterious uh, kind of shadowy figure that uh, brought this record to being. And looking behind the CD, you can just see this very kind of uh, bad sort of close-up picture of the band, which doesn't reveal very much. It's just the head of uh, one member and the shoulders of the others. And this this is one of these, these records that I bought. Um, I probably played it a few times, and I haven't played it since. But I, I don't really have the heart to throw it away because I I can remember it, it just holding it now. I, I it just brings back so many fond memories of Tower Records and the, some of you know the things the music I got there. Some of which I I I really liked, and and some things like this which. Um, you know, I, I didn't really like, but you know, they. I, I was almost. Gl I'm glad that I spent money on them. So there we go. I just put it back in, in the box where, it, to be honest, it will probably stay until I die, and um, my family kind of 
put, put all this stuff on eBay. Anyway, I, I apologise to Fraser for that, but I, I thought I should I thought I should show it.